your boy Dane Diddy. Ambitious Ace. Bang Bang Boomerang. Yeah, man. Episode 2 Damage Control Power Season 5, man. Let's start with 2 Bit. Man, he thought he was like the, the new guy making them head move in charge, huh? Man, look. Dre came in there and, and he took 2 Bit's advice. So I guess 2 Bit felt like he was going to be, because he was talking to him about moving up in the ranks. Yeah, he wanted to be number 2. Yeah. And Spanky would be number 3. <laughs> <laughs> so he thought he could move up. And then he, I guess he felt maybe he could move up to number one if he yeah. took out the drug dealer. Even yeah. though he heard the conversation, didn't he hear the conversation? We got to kill whoever kills him. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck was he thinking? Yo, man, he just was in the moment. He's like, yo, I'm about to get promoted. Didn't go that way. He went rogue. He was trying to be a hero. You know what I mean? Yeah. Trying to be a hero. He got put in his know, place. He tried to get that validation when he got there. Like, yo, I did this for you, man. Yeah. You know, all like that. Had Dre calling him out by his first name and everything. <laughs> Francis. <laughs> he, and he made it look bad, too, because Tubit looked at him like, man, yeah. I will slap the shit out of you, bro. <laughs> like, that's how he looked at him. Yeah. I, don't, I don't remember the first time we saw Tubit. It was, it was the, a couple of When we introduced glimpses. to him, when it was we the whole were connect. introduced to Kanan. It was the whole connect. You when, know, when they did the whole little, little connect thing last so season. So he's been around for a while. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's like his homeboy, right? I, I mean, I'm a, the, the way their relationship looks, it seems that way. Yeah. yeah. So, it's, how did y'all feel about Sammy covering for Tommy? I think it was something he had to do because he knows that's Tony's son. Exactly. I was thinking the same thing. Just out of respect. Yeah. Out of respect. How but many more times? Cause, cause that's it. Zero. That's it. He's zero. like, I'm he not going to do it no more. Because <laughs> I think by now, he's like, okay, I can see how Tommy rolls. You know, until then, it's, it's, it's kind of been like, okay, I, I can see this kid's a little hot-headed, but damn, I didn't know he was this hot-headed. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think he's just like, okay, this I, I'm gonna have to punch him literally <laughs> to get him to get to his senses. And Vincent doesn't look like he plays either. No, no, because this seemed like this was the first time we got to see that Tommy is like really in way over his head. Exactly, because, especially with Jason showing up he, too. Yeah, his distro pulling up. Yeah. Cause I thought that was funny too because like I, yo I ain't scared. Next thing you know, they all had to pull their <laughs> guns out. <laughs> right. You're like, yo, chill out. This is my distro, but. You know, you, the issue with him, yeah. and then he's like, yo, I thought I told you to stop working with Ghost. And you could tell Jason don't give a shit, because he said it in front of Ghost. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? And then you see what's going on with the Italian family. Tommy's just in too deep right now. He, oh, yeah. He's definitely doesn't have a handle on things like he thought he did during season four. It's kind of like all the decisions and everything that he did in season four is now coming into fold with season five. And I, I don't know if he has as much as uh, confidence as he had in season four now because he's kind of feeling like he's a little overwhelmed because even when he saw and talked to his dad you know his dad kind of checked him it's like you should have came to me first i mean he stepped into like a a different what gang or group you yeah. know so he can't really just come in think he's going to just take over like that mm -hmm. so i mean i think yeah he's in over his head right now he's he's been used to the way him and ghost has ran things yeah this is a whole but he's not used gang. to a whole family of mob gang ties and everything like that knowing how respect is handled during a family yeah. i don't think he's used to that yeah because normally if if him and ghost had an issue he talked to ghost about it right ghost would scold him about it but they just move on from right it. right this is a whole different yeah. situation because you just had like you said vincent had two grandsons dead yeah now i gotta, go tell, now gotta go tell their parents and it's just like yo this is a family like, yeah, this is family members. These people are related to us, and they're dead. And he's like, "Don't make your dad look bad, because yeah. you know your dad's inside, shutting his mouth for us right now. So your dad's really a good look on you, but don't abuse that, you know." And then when you think about it, Tommy didn't really have any real consequences with Ghost. No, you know? yeah. So I mean, he pretty much can do whatever he wanted to do. Whereas this family, he can't. I mean, he can't do anything really. Right. Uh, right. Do y'all think Tommy is gonna fuck this up? I think so, and you know why? We got a little hint because from from Kanan, you know, he says that you know he's gonna get in good with Jason and try to take you know the organization organization from uh, Tommy and everything like that. So it kind of lets me know that Kanan's still you know up to his sticky ways and everything well, like that. You saw how he 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 also hinted at Ghost that he'd be out of the game already if it wasn't for Tommy. Mm hmm. Mm. Like when they were sitting in the car, Ghost had to kind of yeah. do a double take. Like, damn, you know what? He right. So, damn, is Tommy about to be public enemy number one? <laughs> you never know, I, man. I didn't even think about it like that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a strong possibility. Like, everything, like you said, it's coming up to him really fast, and I don't know he can handle it. Nah. I, I know he wasn't a huge part of this episode, 
But Tariq, man, what the fuck do you think is going on with this guy? Man, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I feel man. like he's playing everybody. He's yeah. telling everybody what they want him, what what they want to hear. I feel like still in the back of his mind, he's plotting something. I just don't know what it is yet. I'm not sure. Yeah, I have no idea either. It's kind of like all over the place. In my eyes. Yeah, I, I had the you know idea that maybe he was trying to use the idea to go ahead and get revenge on Ghost and everything, but I on Dre for Ghost so he can be like yo. Dad, I I did what you wanted to do, you know, but yeah, he he's got something up his sleeve. He's trying to play the sympathetic role. I'm not gonna make bad decisions like you, bro. You look like you're lying, right? <laughs> like I'm pretty sure everybody that was watching the episode was just like, you're lying. You're lying. That, <laughs> why why does your mom believe you? You know what I'm right. saying? That that's why I can't take anything he's doing seriously. Like I I, I can't trust him at all, you know. So, yeah. but Kanan did make a point. He said that. He's a better ghost at this point in his life. That was key. So, I mean, that has to mean something. I know that um, Tyreek is probably feeling that as well. All right, Silver. Yeah. yeah. Silver and Proctor. Your favorite character. Mm. A B.I. itch. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand Silver, man. So I think. when he walked in that courtroom on Proctor, how was you feeling? I was upset, man. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to lie because I knew he was going to So were you he more upset for, 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 for Silver walking in or when Ben walked in? I mean, Ben, I mean, that's his character. You know what I mean? I mean, he's been going after um, uh, Proctor since the beginning. But Silver, man, he, you know, he didn't really have to say anything. You know, he could have just walked up and said, hey, you know, it's all good. I mean, they're friends, but he made the right call. Keep moving. But instead, he had to do the most. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, he looks like he does the most every time. Because especially <laughs> when they question him, he's just like, oh, well, you know. You know. <laughs> oh, well, like, he just keeps going on and on. It's like, yo, shut up, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah, he really did drag that on. Come, get Proctor's damn license back, <laughs> yeah. for one. And two, Ben, yo, at what point is it okay to smack the shit out of a cop? Because, and I got to ask the question, because he fucking snatched some of his food and ate it and walked away. Yeah. Like, isn't that something? Snatched his food. Put the subpoena. Is that assault? <laughs> <laughs> put the subpoena in what's his name jacket. Just like, yo, you just touchy feely with everybody, man. Exactly. Right? It's this yeah. like asshole shit that cops get away with. Like, at yeah. what point, like, is Proctor allowed to slap the shit out of silver? <laughs> like, yo, I was, yo, he, he put his dirty hands in my food. I don't know. He could have been jacking off before he came here and he touched my food. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, at what point yeah. you should be able to do something. But yeah, Ben gets on my goddamn. He's, he's playing he's the hell out of that he's role. Trying to, yeah, he's you know, he's trying to get the yeah. power because you know that's Hans from fucking Fast and Furious. And that's yeah. all I see. Yeah, yeah I'm going like to say Hans that. Hans out there with moves <laughs> with the chips, always yeah. eating the chips. So when he he ate the chip, he ate the fry just like he ate the chip <laughs> in Fast and Furious. Yeah. Show. But it's just like I think he's trying to make his power moves because right now technically Angela has all the power, but you see yeah. all of them trying to take away the power from her because they know you know they're trying to get the case on Jamie and everything like that. And they know they can't involve her because their emotions will get involved. So it's a whole power struggle, man. Which which gets to me. Why they hating? You know what I'm saying? Why yeah. they hating on no Angela? <laughs> I, like, I'm puzzled by that. You know, like, let her live. Somebody I mean, in the comment actually had a good uh, idea. And they were saying they think Angela went to talk to Proctor because she's going to ask him to represent her because she knows at some point she's going to fall down on her. So she's uh, trying to get in cool with, Aunt, with Proctor. Why, why else would she go? That to makes sense. Because if anything comes up against her, she got some defense. And she knows how good he is. Yeah. And how he'll bend <laughs> the law yeah. Yeah. to her will. Because I'm pretty sure Silver will bend her law to help out Tasha. Yeah. But yeah. otherwise, he's just an asshole. Yeah. Whack. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Keisha and Tommy, are they getting back together this season? You know, I don't think that's going to be the focus, even though there's little hints there. I think Keisha just more so wants to know what's going on. Like, she wants to be, like, you know, she's in the circle, but she's not really in the circle. And even though she's tried her best to stay away from it all, after Raina's death, I think she wants to be involved in the know what everything is going on. Yeah. She kind of feels like, you know, even though she wants to protect everybody and everything, she's out of the loop, and she wants to be into it. Yeah. As far as her and Tommy... I don't really think she cares about it anymore. That was just a little bit of re reminiscing they were doing together and everything like that. But other than that, that's not her sole focus. I think she's more worried about Tasha than anything. He thought Tasha was cooking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it smelled good in there. What's up, Keisha? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I got yeah. I got a feeling he's going to start respecting Keisha this season, you know, because it seems like she's going more towards of a, um, a Tasha role. 
you know, she's, I guess, getting in good. She may get more information. I think she, at this point, she's sucked in. So um, I got a feeling their relationship may even grow. You know. Okay. How did y'all feel about ghosts and after the whole, you know, counseling meeting? Because I, I had a feeling like, man, he's going to go get that guy. Just the way you know he was what? Yeah. I, I had a feeling about that, too. Because it was just like the way he was looking, the way he was just listening to his story. He's like, I can do something I about can that. do something. And it's just like he kind of feels powerless because, you know, he allowed Raina to get killed. So, in a sense, this is his way of making himself feel good but at the same time doing some justice for somebody else's you know kids and everything like that because i don't think he wants to see another kid die mm. so I, I thought that was a real strong pivotal moment for him because he kind of got like that vigilante role kind of onto him now hopefully he don't do it <laughs> for every <laughs> everything <laughs> but yeah and that's another thing i think this episode dealt well with too because you know, I was worried how they will handle the grief of Rena's loss. Yeah. I hope I was just hoping it wouldn't just be one episode, but it seems like it's going to carry on to multiple episodes because they're showing how Tosh is dealing with it. I like that scene where um, she was like, you know, I haven't been able to leave the room. He's like, I haven't been able to come into the room. Yeah, I was dope. And it was just a crazy dynamic between them. And I, I just like how they're dealing with that. You know, even Jamie, he was in the car trying to call Angela, drinking and everything like that. He's dealing with it in a way different way. Yeah. Yeah, way different way. Because his anger is just getting the best of him. And him's just getting up and stabbing the guy. I was just that like, was God crazy, damn. Man. Because yeah. I hope they don't pin it back on the guy that they, because he said he's been following around. Because you got to think the pastor. He might be a snitch. He already looked like a bitch because of, <laughs> he I'm do look saying, like he got some to sleep. So it's just like he already seems like a bitch ass nigga. So it, when when the cops come asking questions, well, we did just have a meeting and he said he was following. Or he'll just sit there and say everything. And they said it was up close stabbing. That sounds pretty personal. Yeah, yeah he was following him around. He knew he knows what bar he goes to and everything. I well, doubt they're going that direction because I don't I don't see ghosts doing anything. You know, he may hit the Kanye West shrug. You know what I mean? And just keep moving. <laughs> But at this point, I don't see him really fighting and saying, hey, no, nah, it was somebody else. You know? Well, like, I do see him fighting Tate because Tate, man, I this see that. episode. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, my I feel like we need to have we, we need to add a category to this every week. We got to have the bitch ass nigga of the week. <laughs> OK, OK. And this week is 100 percent Congressman Tate. Yo, I had a feeling that he was going to pull something like real slide, but I didn't know it was going to be that direct. I thought he yeah. was really right when they when they walked in. He's just like, <clears throat> and we have, I was like, no, yeah, he didn't. Man. I'm like, yo, he had the balls. He lucky Jamie just didn't smack his ass right there, <laughs> you know? You can't, yeah. you can't smack somebody running for governor. I know. No, you can't. I but mean, it just shows what they Tate, lose, you can't. It just shows what Tate is about, though. Uh, he, he's about himself. He's about himself. Yeah. He's all about himself, and everything is for his gain. He's using them as, you know, the poster board family or whatever like that. Just to get his ratings and all that stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. Another power move, I guess you would say. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's another thing this episode did with a lot of power struggles. You, it's you only really... a matter of time before Tasha fucking snaps. I can see that. She's yeah. going to go off on him at some point in this season. So yeah. what do y'all feel about Dre and how he's handling, uh, what's the name, Diego? And Look, everything man, like that? Diego is nuts. Mm -hmm. Can Dre right, handle he's, that? He's a nutcase. And... I feel like Dre is slick enough to maneuver that. I think what he needs to be worried about is just, Cristobal. Oh, okay. Because you, you got to look at, like, Cristobal, he's he's went against Cristobal twice. No, actually, more than twice. He killed the pastor. Mm -hmm. Cristobal was like, yo, yo. Why'd you do that? Yo, like, you're doing yeah. too much. Like, So Cristobal is getting to the point where he's like, I think what's going to happen, because 50 Cent is just sitting outside of this location that Dre don't know that yeah. he's sitting out of. I think Dre gonna go talk to these people. He gonna bring Chris the Ball to the side. Yo, y'all need to work with me. We gonna be partners. I'm gonna listen to what you got to say. Fuck this motherfucker. He's stupid. All I need to do is find out where his daughter is and some shit. You don't feel like Chris Ball would try to take over himself? I don't feel like he's built like that. Mm. I don't. I don't feel like he's built the lead. I feel like that. I feel like he's built to be the number two. Yeah. So if Dre get, I mean, if Kanan took over, I could see Chris Ball and, and I could see Julio, like Chris Ball being Kanan's Julio. He kind of, I kind of feel like he's getting flashbacks from when Tommy. He's like, man, you acting just like Tommy was, you know, making all these rash decisions and everything yeah. like that. So he's probably like, man, did I make the right choice? 
You know. Well, I don't. I feel like Dre you? just thinks he's making the best decisions, but it just doesn't necessarily come out like that. No, nah, he's getting cocky. Yeah, this, he's this finding the wrong person to get cocky with. Yeah, because the Eagles <laughs> won crazy, bro. Like, yeah, for real. So what do you think is going to happen now that Ghost, Tommy, and Kanan have to kill the Jimenez as opposed to where they just wanted to? I mean, it's going to lead to a big confrontation, not only between them and Jimenez, but I just think for them three as a whole. Because, like, you know, Kanan's just going with the flow. Tommy's trying to make everything right. And Ghost just wants justice for his daughter. Yeah. You know, he just wants to see Dre dead. He didn't want to be involved with all this mess. And I think, like you said, what Kanan said to Ghost, he's really thinking, like, man, I wouldn't have been this stuff if it was for Tommy. So it might be, it might create a rift between them three. I mean, there's already a semi rift between them. The only thing that brought them together was Dre. But all these other issues and problems might be, might make a war between them. And I think that's what people may not be paying attention to. And I think that's what it's leading on to. It's bigger than just the Jimenez or Dre. It's just about those core three characters. Well, I'm just excited to see all three of them actually working together because now they have that purpose. Now they have to fight the Jimenez, the most feared group, I think, I think throughout the whole entire series. You know? Yeah. yeah. So They've been talking about them since season one. Since mm-hmm. season one. So now you have the three – these three guys actually have a mission together. I don't think any of them want to go against Jimenez, you know, but – Not Kane and do. Oh, yeah, Kane. Yeah. Robbie Kane, he's crazy. But um, <laughs> but those three, it gives them that mission. And I'm not sure if they're going to all come out from it, you know. I think somebody mentioned it. Like, this is a suicide mission. You yeah, know? Ghost said it. Yeah. yeah. He didn't want those problems. He just wanted Dre. You know, and let's, let's not forget, the writers are going to set us up, man. We better not get it too attached to any characters because yeah. I feel like we're about to get some surprises when this season really starts swinging. It's I not, don't know, man. It's not looking good. This setup, like you said, is a suicide mission, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it definitely is. And then you still got the Italians lurking in the background and Tommy making that situation unstable. And then, right, and right. then like you said, Jason on top of that. Yeah. And that situation being rocky. They might have to watch their back. They might have to kill the Jimenez and the Serbian. Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, my thing is, like, and I'm thinking a little too far, but, like, what's going to make Tyreek turn into the new ghost? Yeah. And what's going to be that that pivotal moment? Because it, it seems like, because Tyreek's all over the place, but it seems like he wants to do good, I guess, trying to go to a different school, so on and so on. But what's going to bring him back and, um, you know, make him get to the streets? You know, because right now he's privileged, you know? Mm-hmm. So uh, that's what I'm thinking in my head, like, you know, what's going to happen this season? And I'm I'm fearful for Angela going to talk to Alicia Jimenez. Mm. I think she's gonna blow her fucking head off if she thinks she <laughs> she's talking yeah. about some. If that is his wife, I can get her to talk, and it's just like she is don't playing. Know she is playing with fire right yeah. now. Yeah. Like uh, they don't give a fuck. You're in a defense attorney. They're in this. They're in North America for a reason, and they still think it's the brothers too. They don't even know that she's the lead. Yeah. They Do y'all no think the uh, investigation? Uh, about the robbery could come back on Tariq in any kind of way? Do you think that's going to happen? Possibly. If I had to guess, I'd say no. I mean, I don't recall him. You know what? It could because maybe the kids would just be like, Tariq's the only one who knew we were out of time. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't mean, the only, the only living witness I can think about is the girl. The girl that Tariq was messing with. Nobody's asked about her yet or anything. Nobody's yeah. questioned her about anything, and that's the only possible link, because you know he did tell her everything that he did with brains. Yeah. So that's the only thing that can possibly get Tariq in trouble. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that's true. Any final thoughts, man? What you graded? Uh, you know, it it was a plot moving episode. You know, yeah. it wasn't too yeah. eventful, but it got the pieces moving. We got to see everything unfold. More problems created. So I give it a solid B. It was cool. It, it kept the plot going. You know, it wasn't as strong as the season premiere, yeah. but it's to be expected, you know. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, normally, you know, the second episode is never super action-packed, super anything. It's like the first episode is usually that. The second episode has to, to ground everything and start to get the story to start folding out. Right. I thought they did a good job with that. Yeah. Uh, you know, Diego, I need to listen to more Spanish people talk. I thought I had heard <laughs> enough, but I haven't heard enough because I just need to understand more of what he's saying. Right. And uh, is Dre working the truth right now, bro? I don't know. Was that I a was different... I, thought, no. I was just like, yeah. yo, this motherfucker is no. really ballsy to be in truth. I don't know if that was truth or the place that he opened up. 
Because remember at the end of the uh, season 10, I mean, not season 10, the, on episode 10 of season, season 4, he was he in the spot. He signed that deal with uh, yeah. the lady. So that might have been his spot that he was working from or whatever. Oh, uh, okay. It looked like truth. But it did. For a minute, I thought it was too. Well, regardless. Because Ghost walked in there like, I'm about to do something. Oh, like, yeah, he was ready. That's right. <laughs> and then he turned right back around yeah. when he saw Diego there. But, yeah, it, 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 was, it, was, it was a solid episode, man. I give it a C+. Plus. Okay. Uh, I can't wait to see where it goes from here. Like I said, this was just a setup episode. Okay. Yeah, yeah same here. I mean, I hate that I'm doing this, but I'm giving it a B, you know? <laughs> and the reason why is because, like, it's just a follow-up episode. You know, they're just trying to put some pieces together and set you guys up for the next episode, set us up. You know, we can't get – every episode can't be like season um, – um, I mean, the first episode. So, yeah, it'll be a solid B for me. Yeah, man. Make sure y'all back next week. We'll be doing the next episode. Man, we're going to do all 10 of the motherfuckers. So make sure you check back every week. If y'all caught something in the, the damn episode that we may have missed out, or y'all got some other theories, because some of y'all had some dope-ass theories. Yeah, really yeah. Let us know in the comments. You know what I'm saying? Down below. And tell us we wrong if you think we wrong about something. But I feel like collectively, as a community... We're figuring this shit out. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? And then you you could also follow us on Instagram at TIC Podcast. You can follow him on Instagram. Ambitious Ace. Ambitious Image. And you can follow him on Instagram. Uh, Welcome to the Wall Podcast. Yeah, man. Welcome to the Wall Podcast. Follow all of us. And then, you know, just holla at us, man. Holla at your boy. All right. Bye, man. Peace. Peace.